Alola everyone, it's the Munch back with another episode of Ultra Sun and Moon. After last time, Hapu became the Kahuna of Pony Island and told us of the flute we can use to summon the legendary Pokemon of Alola and save the world from Necrozma. Except, that all happened over a month ago, and before we get into this episode, I want to apologize to all of you that have been patiently waiting for this next part. I've been pretty inconsistent over the last year, taking small breaks here on YouTube, and it seems each time these breaks get longer and longer, and as you guys see, it's been a whole month and a half now with no videos, but... Lazy Orange shall be no more, and the only way that I can prove to myself and you guys that I can change is to upload again and finally conclude our journey here in Alola. Speaking of which, Rotom seems to be asking a question, what are you doing? I was getting a bit uncomfortable in the Rotom deck, so I was just shifting positions. I've missed you, Rotom buddy, with your super informative things that you say. Anyway, let's go ahead and call upon the power of Charizard because we've actually got to head to the Seafolk Village and more importantly to Executor Island where that flute awaits. So welcome back everyone, Charizard, it's time to fly. And we're back to the Seafolk Village, where it looks like we've got a cutscene right off the bat. Thank you, Hapu, and thank you, Mudsdale. That's what friends do. F friends? An amazing trainer like Hapu considers me a friend? What, have you never had a friend before, Lily? I'm so glad I got to meet you, Hapu. I thought we had something special. To journey to Executor Island, you should speak with Mina. She can help arrange a boat for you. I shall be wishing for your safety. Seriously, I thought we were friends, Lily, but... I guess she's got something even more special with Hapu. Maybe more special than what Hapu and that Mudsdale have got. Who am I kidding? You can't beat that. Anyway, looks like we've got to head to Captain Mina. Now, if I were Mina, where would I hide? Uh, maybe like two steps to the left? I don't know why Rotom's giving us advice on that. It was literally a couple steps. Did you find out anything useful? Yes, and Hapu was made the new Kahuna. Little Hapu was? She's so surprised. We've been having old man Naru look after our grand tiles up until now. Huh, now we've got our little Kahuna. That's great. Yes, Hapu will do her best for her late grandfather, as I must do my best for my mother's sake, and for Nebi as well. And so, there's a place that we need to go. Executor Island. Oh, right, that's where the flute is. Yes. In that case, we better get the chief. Did you call me? Oh, is it the man on the roof? Yes, it is. With the Pelipper too. Oh my goodness. I knew Lily was going to be surprised. Nice to meet ya. I'm the chief of the sea folk. Couldn't help overhearing what you said. So why don't I get you to Executor Island? Oh, thank you. Hold up there, little lady. It's Orange who will go on this trip. He is a trainer after all. And Executor Island is a pretty crazy place. Ha! Huh, that's true. There's some crazy critters on that island. It's one thing for a trainer to go, but if you're not, you should just trust your friend to take care of this task for you. I don't think Lily's gonna take that. Orange! I've got this. You're right. I'm sure you and Crocodile can handle it better than anyone else could. I'll wait here for you to come back. Wait, so I could have had Lily come with me? I'll make you model for a picture, Lily, while we're waiting? Huh? No, what the heck? I wanted to take Lily with me. So you're telling me after a whole month of waiting for our date with Lily, we're going solo on this mission. Should have kept you guys waiting longer. And here we are on the island where it's apparently raining. I thought this place was like right next to the Seafolk Village, but apparently the weather here is crazier than where I live in real life, where it can literally snow one day, then be like 50 degrees the next. I'm not even kidding, that's literally what's been happening here in the Midwest, it's it's pretty crazy. But, let's see what's going on here on the island. Whoa, okay, we've actually got executors shaking their heads like they just don't care. Here 
Here we are at Executor Island. I heard this place used to be a trial site, though that was a long time ago now. Oh, really? Looks like the fellows are even more worked up than usual. But they're always a noisy bunch. It's probably fine. Uh, they don't look fine to me, bro. You go on. Good luck. <laughs> Why does he have to laugh like that? I guess I made up the laugh, but come on, that looked pretty fitting with the motions he was making. Uh, anyway, Rotom had some advice for us there, but apparently I'm not paying attention to anything but the fact that he's got his glowing Roto Lotto eyes, and this crazy executor is gonna attack us, actually? Wait, what? That's not even an executor! I probably should have read what was going on. Maybe that's why they're shaking wildly, because these pincers are probably pinching onto their butts. Or tails, I mean. Yeah, the, the tails, that's, that's what it is. Anyway, uh, Krugadile's not really the best Pokemon to handle a pincer, but I feel like it'll be okay, so let's go for a crunch. It is only level 42, um, but yeah, I guess this gives us a chance to actually catch a pincer if you wanted to use one. I don't think Mega Pincer's in it, which makes pincer a whole billion times better in my opinion, but you know, if some people out there might be fans of regular old pincer, I think it's kind of scary with all those teeth. Yeah, I always used to name my pincer Teeth, actually, after the movie Teeth which I'm not going to tell you what that movie's about, but trust me, you don't want to know. The Executor is waving its head around happily now that the pincer was chased off. Oh, nice! So that is what was happening. Okay, next one, I'll make sure to read what it actually says. It's acting a bit odd. Gruh! Oh, never mind. It's it's not actually going to clarify it, but I'm assuming that's what's happening. The pincer's trying to pinch off, you know, Executor's coconuts. And Executor is just not having it, so Bindi, let's see if you can take care of another one of these. It has, of course, been quite a while since I've seen any of these Pokemon, but uh, because it was my latest playthrough and I haven't really been playing any Pokemon at all, um, I definitely remember this team here, as he's going to actually miss the submission there. I'm curious if Foul Play will actually do more. It does damage based on the enemy's attack stats, so maybe this Pincer's actually... Wow! Okay, with Swords Dance, it definitely would have taken it out, but... Fortunately, he used it a little too late there, and yeah, it looks like we're going to need one more crunch to finish it off, but it's all good. Anyway, what I was saying, or as I was saying, haven't really been playing much Pokemon, which I think on my previous breaks I did. To be honest, I can't even remember with how many breaks I've taken recently, uh, but just to fill you guys in on the gap that's been going on this last month and a half, it actually all started when I went to my friend John's wedding, um, when the last episode was uploaded, was basically the day right before I left for Seattle, and we actually spent a whole week there uh, before the wedding even happened, so that was a whole week where I planned on uploading videos even while I was in Seattle, except that when I got there, it was a little bit too much R&R, you know, rest and relaxation, plus I was with all of my friends, and we were there, like I said, for a special event, a wedding, so I ended up taking the whole week off and just enjoying life in Seattle. Probably could have done some vlogs as well, but I really just haven't been, I guess, putting as much importance into YouTube as I definitely used to, and I don't know if that was a change that I really intended to ever make, but slowly over time, yeah, I feel like I started to kind of detach myself a little bit, and that's definitely not what I wanted to do, so next time I ever go on any of these trips, definitely gonna try to record ahead of time and also do stuff while there, like vlog, because we actually had a lot of cool adventures with some friends of mine that are also YouTubers, you guys might know, and I feel like we're definitely missing out on opportunities by not just recording all the time, so yeah, I, I gotta get back to the grind, get back on those vlogs. Anyway, looks like the executors have all been driven off now, so off they go to... Oh, never mind, one of them still stayed here. Oh, only one of them actually left. I guess he's there to help us out. I don't know, man. You could definitely catch some executors on this island, though, and even the palm trees that aren't executor actually kind of look like them. Look at this one here. That kind of looks like it's the tail, and of course it would stretch up above to the coconut heads, but let's see if we can actually find executors in the wild here, and yep. There it is, it's big old head was actually sticking out over the grass, even as the Pokedex loaded up, so that was kind of funny. But yeah, Darwin's gonna come out here. I'm not really planning on catching an Executor per se, even though it is a pretty awesome Grass and Dragon Pokemon, so if you wanted a Dragon, now's your chance. Although there's a lot of other cool Dragon Pokemon in this game, especially compared to the original Sun and Moon, uh, but yeah, I have a feeling this little dude is about to help us up. And he did, lifted us up in thanks. Wait a second, can I actually go back down because I feel like there's something in that cave? Oh. 
Well, he actually will take us down. That's nice. All right, let's check this out. And indeed, a big pearl was hiding there. No actual item, but, you know, that's a pretty obvious spot for a hidden item. Like, I would have been disappointed if there was nothing, actually. Uh, but over here, we got some smashable rocks. And I was actually expecting there to be another hidden item, but I guess maybe this is... Oh, what the heck? There's just more rocks. Is that a sticker? Oh, it is a sticker. Wow. Never thought there would actually be one here on Executor Island, but lo and behold, my friends, there seems to be stickers everywhere. Once again, I'm going to call this, this Executor here because I feel like I'm still missing something. Maybe around behind him? Yeah, look, there's a whole path we can travel over here. Executor Island has got more secrets than I thought hidden, and this time it's a revive, actually. That's, that wasn't really that worthwhile. For the third time, we're going to ride on up. Or is it fourth time? I don't know, I guess we go up and down, so that's quite a couple of rides on Executor's long neck. Uh, there's nothing up on the final platform that I can see, so let's go and grab the flute at last. The flute is placed on a very old pedestal. Will you take it? Indeed! We got the sun flute! And our friend Lily, of course, has the moon flute, so we put them both together, and with that, we should be able to... What? Did taking the flute really just clear everything up like that? And even make a rainbow appear? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, when are we gonna get Pokemon Rainbow? Wait a second. I just remembered, there's an entire post game that I have never played in my life that involves Team Rainbow Rocket and holy moly, we're almost there guys. But first we've gotta get through this. Welcome back, Orange. Now you've gotta play those flutes up at the altar, I guess. The altar can be found in the deepest part of the Bass Pony Canyon. Those executors sure took a liking to you. You've clearly got something important in you, as a trainer, if Pokemon like you that much. I don't know what it could be, man. I seem to abandon my Pokemon for months at a time and not even care about them, so I have no idea what you're talking about. But honestly, I do love most of my teams in these playthroughs. I feel like I pick Pokemon that aren't just powerful, but ones that I personally really like or just look really cool. And because of that, I end up being more attached to my Pokemon teams than... I guess a normal person being attached to digital creatures on a screen would be, uh, if that makes any sense. Anyway, it's been a while since I said this, but it's time to heal up. And begin our journey up to the altar of the sun or moon. I don't know which one it actually is, but as Captain Mina there said, it's up uh, on the vast Pony Canyon or at the end of it. And that means we actually got to get through these routes again. Hopefully no wild Pokemon run into us or we run into them. Of course, I jinxed it as I was rushing through with Tauros. I feel like nothing should be able to catch up to Tauros, but apparently Pelipper can. It had been so long that I almost forgot my hatred of Pelipper appearing in like every patch of grass near a body of water. In this case, we're pretty close to the ocean, so definitely a lot of Pelippers around, and it looks like we've already made it. Oh my goodness, never mind. Something's blocking our path. And that something is Team Skull. You're from Team Skull? What is it that you want from us? Here they come. I heard about you numbskulls at Ether. Do you really know how to open an ultra wormhole and save our boy Guzma? Let me see if you really are bad to the bone enough to save our boy Guzma. What? Are we about to battle these people? Oh geez, I guess we are. That was a really cool camera angle there, how it flipped around from our character with his ever so dead smile. That doesn't make sense, but it just feels like our character has no emotion. Like he's always smiling, clearly he's happy, but aside from that, there doesn't seem to be much going on in that little brain of his. I guess that means there's not much going on in my brain, because I'm my character is me. I don't know, it's a weird role-playing type of thing. I'm not really sure how it works, but anyway, this girl has only gotten Ekans, and I feel kind of bad because she talked it up as if, you know, we gotta prove ourselves that we can save your boy Guzma, but I don't know how the heck we're proving ourselves against an Ekans. Like, that doesn't prove anything. These are Ultra Beasts that we're gonna be going up against there. This is just a little Ekans, so... Yeah, just, just don't really get how this proves anything. I'm not even trying to save your boy Guzma. I'm just out here to save the world. Which one's more important? I'm going to leave that one up to you to figure out, Team Skull. You're way stronger than me! Oh. Okay, then. 
doesn't matter. We'll come after you with all our Pokemon at once then. Little home slice, we'll get 500% to save our boy Guzma. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this real? A 1v5 right now. Okay. That guy is inspiring me though. I definitely got to start giving my 500% back into YouTube because like I said, guys, this last month and a half has been very, very lazy and... I guess while it was happening, it flew by like every day was just ending as quick as it would start. I guess that's what happens when you don't really get much done in an entire day. Like back in the day when I was in school and making videos and balancing a social life, it felt like days were a whole lot longer. Uh, whereas if you literally do nothing but watch TV and play games, turns out days go by really quickly. I don't know, to me it sounds like it would be the opposite. Like if you're sitting there doing nothing, it would feel like an eternity, but actually uh, I guess after time goes by, like after a whole month looking back at it, it definitely feels like it flew by. Whereas if you're busy the entire time and a whole month passes, uh, you feel like it was an eternity, I guess. So definitely better to keep yourself busy. And if I had to promote anything, that would definitely be the way. So don't be like me, guys. Put in your 500% into whatever you're doing and then keep on doing that because once you start getting a little comfortable and slipping up, uh, that's when the slippery slope downward begins and by that I mean like literally um, I used to upload every single day back then and I don't think I would really take many breaks But slowly as I started taking breaks uh, like I said in the beginning of the videos those breaks kind of got longer and longer each time and They just kind of started building lazy habits that I didn't really used to have before I mean I've always been kind of lazy, but never to this point and I never wanted it to get to this point so don't be a Team Skull Grunt is what I'm trying to say. Be a Guzma, be a Plumeria, and actually, I guess they're still kind of lazy. They're still in Team Skull, and I don't know why I just use a Crunch against an Alolan Raticate. Holy moly, that double edge really hurt. Uh, so let's swap it up, go for a little dig. This guy here has actually got five Pokemon, which is really unusual for Team Skull Grunt. They usually all just have one little weakling, like that girl with the Ekans. Um, but I guess it's because this guy is actually using all five of the Pokemon from his buddies that were with him so shout out to them man making this man's more powerful than he ever dreamed he could be it would have been kind of cool if somehow they did a special sprite though and had all five grunts uh, or i guess four standing behind him kind of doing this team skull gang signs that would have been really dope actually but you know it's also kind of a lot of work and i don't know if the pokemon games are really ready to have that many models on screen but Hey, maybe once the Switch comes around, we're going to have, like, entire crowds of people watching Pokemon battles, like Battle Revolution back in the day. Even though it wasn't the best game, I actually really like the graphics of that game, the fact that it was fully 3D Pokemon and not on the 3DS graphics, you know? Uh, because as much as I love the charm of these graphics, it would be really awesome to see Pokemon in full HD. So I cannot wait for the Switch version for that and many more reasons because... Yeah, we don't know what the heck it's going to be like. Like, are they actually going to switch up the formula? Or are they going to pull another Ultra Sun and Moon where they basically give us a DLC game? I don't think that can really happen again because, uh, yeah, it's going to be a completely new generation. But either way, I am very excited for what's ahead in the future for Pokemon. And speaking of the future, looks like our future is looking good. All the scrunts are just taking a nap. I may have lost, but listen up, yo. Please save Guzma for us. You dummies. They're trying to save the boss. So what do you want to get in their way for? Ho-ho! The big bad boss. I feel like she is the new boss of Team Skull now that Guzma's gone, right? Huh, <laughs> you girly. Lily, right? That's right. You're really ready to do this finally. To be honest... I've treated you really badly. Even if I was just doing the work the president told me to do, I shouldn't have done all that. Even if I apologize now, I know it's probably too late for you to forgive me, though. I hope it's not too late for me to apologize to you guys. See, Guzma, he really likes the president. She's only adult who ever seemed to see how strong he was. The president? My mother is... she's selfish. She decides all by herself what she thinks needs to be done to make other people happy not even caring what it is they may want. But people ought to help one another out. That is what I've learned here in Alola, and that is what I'm going to teach her too. Then I think we can save Mr. Guzma. You know, deep down, you're kind of like the president. 
You've gone in a different direction, but I can tell you have the same strength in your convictions. Orange, Lily, I know you've got no reason to help, but could you help us save Guzma? No problem with my empty, staring, happy face. That big dummy, I don't think he's even aware of it, but Alola really means a lot to him. That's why he's doing something so reckless to try to save it. The poison type Z crystal. Maybe it'll help you somehow. Oh. A nice low reward I wasn't even expecting, actually. I guess giving you the Z crystal is also kind of, what'd you call it? Helping each other out? Oh yeah, you got your first stone directly from Kapu Koko, didn't you, Orange? You'd better take care of it. That's one special Z power ring you've got there. A trainer is only a trainer because of the Pokemon with them. If you ever forget that, you'll bring the wrath of the Tapu down upon yourself. You should be fine, though. I'm out of here. See ya. That is so true, though. A man is nothing without the people behind him. Or the Pokemon in this case. I suppose even Team Skull's not all bad. Thanks for helping me again, Orange. And here, let me thank your team, too. Hey, the good old Lily Heel. Missed that one, too. Alright, let's finally go to the altar. The vast Pony Canyon lies ahead of us. Let's do it! I am so ready. And I've noticed Rotom this entire time. I've been talking in the bottom screen, but I'm getting less and less scared of Team Skull. What? Why? They're only the most mean muggin group of skulls around. Aren't they actually called Skull Gang in Japanese? Because every time I hear that one dude with the rainbow colored hair scream, Skull Gang! All I can hear is actually Skull Gang even though I don't think that's what he's saying, but... Anyway, the vast Pony Canyon lies ahead of us. As you can see, it is the path to pay homage at the shrine, and that is exactly what we intend on doing, so let's head inside and continue our journey to what we've finally been waiting for this entire episode, our battle with the Kahuna Hapu. That's right, I'm not gonna end it off just yet, before we can take on the Vast Pony Canyon, which is kind of the victory road of this game, we've got one final challenge, and there she is lying in front of us. She's not exactly the biggest around, but she definitely packs a punch, so here is Kahuna Hapu. And Lily lagging behind us, as always. It's a nice tree you got there. Did everything go well? Well, I... Oh yeah, that's right, Lily didn't even get to go. I had to have Orange do everything for me yet again, but... Nothing wrong with that, Lily. People cannot survive all on their own. They have to go get help on another out. Same for Pokemon, too. That is what my grandfather used to say. And Mudsdale, apparently. <laughs> it's that kindness of yours, Orange, that keeps that brilliant smile on Lily's face. Oh, I thought she was talking about our own smile. Please, wait. What the heck? This dude just snuck up on us like it's nothing? We have been betrayed by Lusamine, and now we're expected to put our faith in a child like you next? Even if we are still weak, we have also learned to do battle with Pokemon. We should be the ones to resolve this situation with Necrozma ourselves! I will defeat you, and we will handle things with our own power this time. Wait, what? I thought we were about to battle Hapu, but apparently things have taken a turn? You mean to tell me that this entire time when I was playing this game, waiting for the game to switch it up from the original Sun and Moon, and I quit playing it for a month when we finally get to the different stuff. Now that's what I call bamboozles right there. Mr. Dulce is going to be challenging us to a battle instead of Hapu, and of course his signature Pokemon, Poipole, is coming out, uh, which I don't believe had Levitate last time we battled it, so I guess we'll go for another dig. Uh, yeah, it's got Beast Boost because, of course, this is an Ultra Beast, even though it really doesn't look like any of the other ones we know so far. Uh, but this game has been out for a couple of months now. You guys all know what's up with Poipole. I didn't really want to spoil it before, and I guess I still won't spoil it because we're pretty dang close to figuring out the truth about it anyway. So might as well leave it a surprise for those of you that still somehow haven't played or don't know about the secrets of this game, the ending and stuff. But... Either way, our dig didn't really do as much damage as I was hoping for there, and we ended up getting poisoned. Uh, so let's try out a crunch and see if that's... Nope, of course it's not any better. Pretty sure it's mostly the X defense that this man used as he goes for a Fell Stinger. I don't know if that was really supposed to hurt there, bro, but it didn't really do much. I think Fell Stinger is an attack that, like, it's meant to be an execute kind of move, like you use it when the opponent's low HP. Um, I don't really remember. 
It's definitely a bug move though, so it was super effective. And the poison keeps ticking away. I'm actually kind of scared because I think with a Felsinger and the poison next turn, we might just get taken down. And I guess we're about to find out. Please, poison, don't take us down just yet. Uh, okay, actually we survived with still a good amount. So let's finish things off with a crunch. Even though the crunch last time didn't really do that much. Oh wait, he's got a hyper potion. This man's actually been learning a thing or two about battles. Okay, never mind. It looks like I've bamboozled myself in this case as the poison will finally tick Bindi down. Or take. I guess the, the poison ticks and Bindi gets taken. Either way, Nani, it's time for you to come out here and maybe throw a little tantrum. I saw that it was super effective, but I don't think this is really the best move we could go for. Uh, we still don't have anything more powerful than Flame Charge, though. Or wait, do we have Fire Punch? I felt like I did get Fire Punch, so I guess we might have that. Either way, the Stomping Trantum is super effective, so let's let's try it out. And nope, we, we still have Flame Charge. Guess I got the Thunder Punch instead of Fire Punch for some reason, which is okay. I mean, we definitely could use the speed and... Oh! Critical hit, so we're not even gonna need it. Poi Pull gets taken down, and Nani, it's been a while, I've missed ya. Fire spinning Marowak thing. Can we not stand up against the long history of a region like Alola, where the culture of Pokemon battling has had so long to develop? Mm hmm. The people of Alola get along and get to know each other through Pokemon battles. Yeah, we've been doing this for a while over here. Greetings, I'm the Kahuna of this island. Hapu, you are from the Beast Worlds, aren't you? We in Alola have long lived together with our Pokemon, being aided by them to survive. If you are in sort of, if you're in some sort of trouble, then we'll gladly come to your aid, however we can. Hapu sure is quick to give out the help like that. I thought the Ultra Recon Squad was a little dangerous, but that is most generous of you. When Necrozma comes, then will you battle it? So it's all up to us. I mean, I never expected it to be any other way. So yes, of course we'll take on the challenge. They seem to be a lot happier than you think about having to battle off some legendary Pokemon though. Well then, the path to the shrine is through the canyon. You'll find other trainers in this place though. They come for training. It'll be a tough road. You'll have to pitch in too, Lily. But if you two end up in any real trouble, Mudsdale and I will hasten to ya. Oh, really? Thank you, Hapu. I'll do all I can to help Orange. As always, we've got an amazing support staff with us, and now we've got even more as the Ultra Recon Squad seems to be backing us up as well. Even though they kind of want us to take on Necrozma all on our own, I mean, as you saw, they're not the best Pokemon battlers out there. I was really hoping to have an epic battle with Hapu, but I guess we'll have to settle for our little battle with Poipol and Dual Say. So until the next episode, that is going to be it for today. Next time, we will head into the vast Pony Canyon and hopefully take down all the trainers in there and make it to the altar so that we can finally save the world from Necrozma after like four months and only 30 episodes. But the grind begins now and I'll see you in the next one. Pop these diamonds like a pickaxe, Stevie. You a silly Stevie in the village with them scary mobs and them skelly shooting. You run up and they shoot an arrows. We ain't using axes, yo creeper. You a loser, MC up the arrow, MC on the roof. Arrows and my hop are your Steve on my phone. She one of mine, but you keep her diamonds off. I only want the pick.